Hi, and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. In today's episode, we're going to talk about all the things that you shouldn't do in Azure. That's right, I'm going through all the anti-patterns from the Cloud Adoption Framework. So let's go. In short, the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework contains several pillars, which explain how to bring your business successfully to the cloud. See my other video linked in the description if you want to deep dive into the Cloud Adoption Framework. This framework also contains a list of anti-patterns, things you should avoid like the plague for your cloud adoption. As you can see from this list, there are 16 anti-patterns belonging to the different pillars of the cloud adoption framework. We'll start with the first two, which falls under this strategy. First anti-pattern here is called inadequate motivation. Many companies today announce a cloud first or a cloud only strategy, not knowing exactly what it means, nor how to measure it. An example of this is a company announcing to have all their systems move to the cloud within a year. At the end of the journey, all the systems are in the cloud, but at what benefit or at what cost? There needs to be a tangible benefit that can be measured. To avoid falling into this end pattern, there needs to be KPIs and goals defined so that the success can be measured. KPIs can be set uh, example on the business requirements, such as improved system response by X amount of milliseconds and an increased financial savings of X amount of dollars per month. Next anti-pattern is that misaligned motivation. As in my previous example, a company announces a cloud-only strategy. The question from all departments are, why are you doing this? Not everyone in the company is automatically going to understand what a cloud-only strategy is and why it has been taken. This can cause friction within the company, resulting in slow adoption, as not everyone is aligned. It's very simple to avoid this anti-pattern. Decide why you want to adopt the cloud, clearly define your reasons and communicate them with the company. In the plan pillar, there is an anti-pattern called wrong cloud operating model. This has everything to do with how a company operates and uses the technology in the cloud. So there's a big shift coming from traditional IT, where you manage and are responsible for the hardware as opposed to the cloud. The focus there are digital assets and workloads in the cloud. Your company needs to be prepared for the shift and align the cloud operating model closer to the business. Next, and the pattern is choose the wrong service model which is actually a fun one because it sometimes contradicts what Microsoft may tell you. There is often a general blank statement that moving to a PaaS solution in the cloud will always cost less than an IS virtual machine solution. Companies often forget that it's not enough just to switch the technology to PaaS. All the underlying processes and responsibilities change when going from IS to PaaS, which also have to be considered. It may even be beneficial to start with IaaS in the cloud and then move on to pass solutions as the company matures. Key takeaway here, the cloud adoption framework clearly states that blindly going pass is an anti-pattern. The last one in the plan pillar is the anti-pattern called replacement instead of modernization. Applications that are based on PaaS and software as a services, SaaS, are relatively easy to maintain. They usually require little effort from management. Uh, as a result, many companies, uh, they redesigned old complex architecture landscapes by replacing them with SaaS and cloud native concepts. This architecture change usually leads to major replacement projects. It's a complex, cost-intensive task to actually manage and execute these projects. Instead of looking only at modernization, you need to explore the possibilities of replacing the product that you have maybe with a SaaS solution. We're moving on to the ready pillar of the cloud adoption framework. The first anti-pattern there is called preview services in production. This is self-explanatory. Do not use any services that are in preview for production. Granted, of course, there are different preview stages that Microsoft offer their Azure services, which indicate how close they are to being production ready. However, there is no SLA, there's no support, or no finalized cost to be had from Microsoft for this one. 
So avoid them for anything except testing environments and evaluating how they work the services. Inaccurate resilience and availability assumptions is the next anti-pattern. This is highlighted by an example of a startup company which implements a mission critical application on infrastructure as a service IaaS. Developers at the startup have looked into the virtual machines VM uh, uptime of the SLA, which have a 99.9%. Since they like to cut cost, uh, they use a single VM using premium storage. When the VM fails, the application can't recover. They fail to realize that the VM has an SLA of 99.9%, but there are many other components in between, such as connectivity. Also, what does Microsoft give you if they don't meet the SLA? Well, they give you a percentage of the service credit back on your next Azure bill. So you have to ask yourself, is that really enough for you? We are at the last anti-pattern in the ready pillar. IT as a cloud provider. This has to do when the existing IT department has become a cloud provider. Its scope suddenly increases in responsibility for all reference architecture while providing IaaS and PaaS solutions to the business. This is where the Cloud Center of Excellence comes in to help. I have a separate video on the CCOI linked in the description of this video should you want to dive deeper into this. To avoid this anti-pattern, you have to follow the existing framework, such as the Cloud Adoption Framework, a well-architected framework, along with pushing SaaS solutions where possible. In addition, set up a CI-CD pipeline for the IT tooling and for the code repositories. Moving on to the next pillar, we are at Manage, uh, which has one antipathy pattern called Neglect of Business Outcomes. This is where the focus is on a specific technology instead of the desired business outcome. You may be super excited to hear that there's a new improved CI-CD platform that has a lot more functionality than what you're used to. You adopt this CI-CD tooling only to find out at a later stage that it actually didn't bring any tangible improvement such as flat, faster deployment and time to market. This can be avoided by making sure that the business and technology goals are aligned and very importantly that they can be measured. This moves us into govern with an anti-pattern called misaligned shared responsibilities. When you adopt the cloud, it may not be clear where the responsibility lies with the cloud provider. The HR department may deploy a virtual machine, thinking that the cloud takes care of the operating system updates. As we know, this is not the case and they may end up with a security risk. So this can be avoided with a readiness plan uh, and a RACI table. This also ties into the next anti-pattern called inaccurate out-of-the-box security assumptions. While Microsoft, they provide a plethora of different ways to secure the environment, it's still your responsibility to decide on which controls to apply. This is where you need to have guardrails and policies in place to prevent security breaches. It's also a good idea to run the Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark to assess your environment. Last one in the govern pillar is the custom compliance or governance frameworks and the pattern. There are extensive lists of existing security standards out there, such as the CIS controls, NIST, or for example, the biocompliancy in the Netherlands. Having your own custom compliance may result in incompatibilities with your after environment. So use the standard security and controls from the existing framework as published by Microsoft. If they're good enough for government banks and healthcare, I am actually confident they can be applied to your situation as well. Moving on to the organized pillar with the anti-pattern IT cost centers. Most of us has felt this struggle where actually the company treat the IT department just as a cost and doesn't value it for the value that it brings. Simple steps to avoid this is to make sure the business units are paying for the IT resources they use in the cloud. It's part of their business expense and using tags in Azure is a great way for this. In other ways, make sure that you have cost transparency because IT enables the business, it is not just a cost. Next fun and the pattern is platform development without a business approval. 
This is where the IT department sets up a platform without involving the business units. You may end up with a platform where the business unit developers may not have the permissions they need, not have access to the resources, and they start doubting this new platform. So what happens then? Well, the IT business units developers, they buy their own Azure subscriptions and set up their own environment, which is also referred to as shadow IT. So avoid working in IT silos and involve the developers and the technical decision makers to ensure there's a platform which is usable for the business. Next anti-pattern is definitely one of the most important ones. Core business function outsourcing. Nobody cares about your business more than you do. Consulting partners and managed service provider MSPs, they play an important role in the cloud journey. However, make sure that decisions are taken by your company, especially when it involves critical design areas. External partners, they are there to speed up and help you along the cloud adoption journey. They will advise you on decisions, but ultimately your company is responsible to take those decisions. If you are with me this far, then congratulations. We're at the last anti-pattern called technical decision makers instead of cloud engineers. While technical decision makers, they're very important, you cannot complete a full cloud adoption journey with only them. Make sure you have a healthy blend of skill set in your teams, including cloud engineers with experience to deploy infrastructure as code and policy driven governance. There we have it, folks. We have covered all the anti-patterns listed in cloud adoption frameworks by Microsoft. If you are like me, I am sure you actually recognize many of them, but now it's up to you to influence and put the organization on the right track. Have an awesome rest of the day and until next time, see you.